really glad that everyone showed up. Mark, anything? Um, I'm <sighs> too choked. And I'm Colin Catlin. I'm Kelly's uh, twin brother. Um, my entire life was my favorite memory with Kelly. And uh, let's see, I'm going to talk to you about the ride a bit. So One last event to remember Kelly Catlin, the Olympic cycling star who committed suicide weeks earlier. Following the same 28 mile stretch she rode hundreds of times while attending the University of Minnesota, where her coach, teammates, fans, father, and brother. It is very emotionally challenging to have just one more thing to make me think about her all the time. Kelly was always looking for an area to excel. I'm gonna go back to the lecture room. I think this came out at a very early age. She was the first chair violinist for her high school orchestra and fluent in Chinese. She even got a perfect SAT score. Kelly's life was governed by a level of self-discipline to ensure that she would shine in almost everything she did. She got the best grades and exams because she studied right. twice as long as anyone else did. You had to put the base singles, O and B and N and E. She was really good at cycling because she trained harder and smarter than most people did. Is that better? Yeah. The story of her life was just pure focused work. She's always been this positive, full of life, energetic kind of person. Only four years after Kelly started cycling, she became an Olympic medalist. But after two crashes led to injuries, the sport became a burden as her expectations for herself seemed unachievable. She had to stop training. Almost any effort would bring on a headache. Then she had trouble, started having trouble with um, mental issues, like uh, she intrusive thoughts. She couldn't get them out of her head. On March 7th, she killed herself. I was at work and I got a phone call from my mom It says, we haven't heard from her in two days. And I'd, I'd heard from her the previous day, so I wasn't super worried. They called in a welfare check, they went in, and she was dead. Her death at 23 is part of a national epidemic. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for people between the ages of 10 and 34 in the United States, according to the Centers for Disease Control. Experts stress that there is no one cause for suicide, which has left her family struggling with the question of why. Here's a Kelly's bicycles over here. So They shipped their bicycles back from uh, Stanford, so I haven't unpacked them yet. Uh, they're still sealed up. Uh, I, I think she was failing herself and what she wanted to be or something. She couldn't accept a different course to her life or something. She was so used to success that I think any little failure, especially a big failure like concussions and stuff, broken arms, all these things, really scared her and was way beyond her bounds. She was seeing her whole life accomplishment in a very short term, and if she had a short term failure, she wasn't seeing herself as a 23 year old with you know, 60 years of life left. Kelly's mother was looking forward to having her home for spring break. The room she prepared for her is now frozen in time. This is one of those things that kind of hits you later. I kind of changed it around. Instead of being impersonal, I put things in it that I thought she'd like, kind of some soothing colors, you know, training and, and traveling all the time. I thought something nice. So her stuffed horse. <laughs> I smile because it's nice to think of her. Um, she had so much energy. She... Um, I don't know, when she came home, it was just sort of like she lifted everybody around her. Not, not a, a sweet goody two-shoes, but she just, she just had so much energy. I don't know how else to say it, but she almost vibrated. Uh, and, and it was infectious. And, and her laugh and her jokes and poking fun at her brother and, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, those are good memories.